Welcome everybody back to Wolfer Programming. Today I'm going to talk about the new Pine Phone Pro, which I got in a couple days ago. This probably won't be the first review you've seen on the Pine Phone Pro, but I wanted to give it a couple of days to play with it, to really understand it, what it's capable of, where it's at right now. Um, before I gave you a, an interview, a lot of people just gave their first impressions and they didn't really talk uh, too much about it. So this is the Pine Phone Pro and I've also included a couple accessories that you well, I personally would want to have um, with this phone. So this is kind of an expensive device. It's $400. The previous Pine Phone was between $150 and $200. I also have the original Pine Phone as you've seen from other videos if you've checked out my channel before. It's really slow. It is terribly slow. The Pine Phone is potato slow. It is awful. It's just not usable as an everyday device. Phone calls don't sound great already. The text messaging hardly ever works. At least last time I tried it, it's been a few months. It's always getting better. But the Pine Phone Pro is a different device. And this is based on the Pine Book Pro. It's the same CPU architecture, underclocked a little bit to keep the heat under control. Uh, the front camera is now the same camera as the rear camera on the original Pine Phone. And there's like a better rear camera. So this might actually end up being a decent camera. Now the camera doesn't work yet. I'll go ahead and say that this is the Explorer edition. And what that really means is th they haven't got all the drivers finished. So th if you didn't know, the way Pine Phone works is they put out a device with some initial work done on it to get it out in the wild. And then the open source community kind of goes the extra, the extra mile. So they start writing stuff. And this is to create a Linux phone ecosystem and um, that you know that sounds to some people like why would I buy a device that's not done yet? Why? I mean, personally, I believe that this is the most amazing phone since the original iPhone. It's the most revolutionary thing. The amount of freedom you get as a software developer on a Linux phone, it's just it's uh, it's amazing. All right, but let's go ahead and talk about how the phone works. Uh, so these are a couple of accessories that you want to have, and this is actually from my original Pine phone. The color is already starting to tint. Um, I haven't tried the hard case yet. I think I'm gonna order it. The soft case is pretty garbage. I actually already broke my original Pine phone screen in this case. I did order a replacement screen and replace it, and that went fine. Um, but I still like to have something to keep it from getting scratched. So, you know, this this it works. It's not it's not great, but um, it works. So because that's not enough protection, I also just found this thing at Walmart, which is you know just some generic case you can find these at any any big box retailer store and this to kind of keep it uh, from falling apart I also picked up a 256 gigabyte SD card so I can start keeping my files um, my home directory mounted to the SD card being a Linux phone you might want to distro hop a lot you might want to try different different OS's uh, so I think the best way to go about it is to mount all your home directory files onto an SD card. And here this is 256 gigabyte. It comes with a really fast internal memory, eMMC, and it's at 128 gigabytes. It's really fast. I have no complaints about it. I've compiled some code on it. It runs really fast. Uh, but also that that's not uh, user replaceable. So if we do a lot of writes, um, maybe it's good to do it to the SD card so that it can preserve the life of the internal memory. So let's go ahead and get uh, get started looking at the device. Um, it is KDE Plasma by default. Right now there isn't a, a way, uh, a documented way to reflash the internal memory to a different operating system. They're going to fix that. The bootloader still has some work. So you're going to start by opening it and ask for your pin. I'm going to look away while I put that in. All right. And this is the Plasma desktop. So I'll go ahead and say it is way faster than the original um, original Pine Phone. Everything is faster, everything is improved, everything looks great. You can change the wallpaper. Some of these settings haven't been getting saved for me after I do it though. The desktop is still very buggy. However, the KDE Plasma desktop is much more functional than Posh. Fosh, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I do prefer Fosh on the original Pine Phone. It's faster. Um, and uh, I don't really have a choice to, to change to it. And you say, see, this is really, really smooth, 
really, really smooth. Um, the, brow the web browser, while not perfect, is a great web browser and it works. So here's we have Hacker News, scrolling works fine. You can check your Facebook, you can go to Reddit. Um, you, can, you can add web apps to your home screen. See here if I wanted to add this, um, you click the three dots and you would probably, uh, let's see, you can do show desktop, all that good stuff. Let's see if I can add to home screen. And um, might take that a minute. Let's see if it's already added it. Yep, right there. And then open it up as a web app. So that works great. And that'll give you um, a little bit of help you know, filling up your app drawer. Some of the apps it comes with that I like, um, the audio tube I don't really like because I don't even think it saves anything you've done, any of your searches. And it basically streams music from YouTube or stuff. I think it uses sort of some of the same tech that a lot of these new YouTube um, streaming things, I think it picks up from Insidious incident, incident, instances. But uh, yeah, so you have uh, you can have an Instagram web app, not the actual thing. So music, it comes with, uh, or you can download Elisa. Uh, you can download Lollipop, which is the GNOME version. Um, Elisa and Lolli Elisa and V V V V V Vave <laughs> are pretty similar. This is by the Maui team, and I actually just cloned this down and compiled it. And um, I, I kind of like the Maui project and what they're doing. They they have a lot of good UI. And so this is actually mounted to my SD card. If you guys want an FSTAB example of how to mount your music folder to your FSTAB, then uh, you can ask so in the comments below and I'll post you a link. So yeah, it's a great MP3 player and you just pop in an SD card and you can load it up. So I'll use this to go running with. This is a pretty good, pretty good, uh, pretty good MP3 player. That's Vivave, Vav, I don't know how to pronounce it. You never hear these things spoken out loud. Elisa is also really good. And these are KDE native apps, so they're all written in um, Kurigami, which is basically Qt Quick. And I haven't tried creating playlists or anything like that. But yeah, everything everything seems to work. It's not going to be the best speaker, but headphones work. <laughs> you know, that's one of my favorite things about this phone is that it has a user replaceable battery. I have an extra battery and it has an SD card slot and it has a headphone jack. And th at this point, those are revolutionary features because no phone has them. So if your battery gets worn out, you just swap it out. There's no going to a shop or anything to get it replaced. There's no, you know, using a hair dryer to desolder stuff. It's just uh, open it right up and, and do your thing. So, um, okay, yeah, so programming apps. Really, really cool. Um, making uh, programming apps is one of my favorite things. I have a script here that will actually start the uh, SSH server running so that I can then SSH into the phone. And it starts it up and um, I'll put in my password, look away. And it actually loads up the IP address onto the Dbus and displays it as a notification so that I know where to SSH to. And then I just have my key file for my desktop and my authorized key file, I'm good to go. All right, I can SSH into it. And then I can do, uh, you know, compile things and test things, and even probably compile stuff for the original Pine phone from here, which is faster. So this is a, you know, you might, you might want to build your apps on a faster phone and then deploy them to others who has a cheaper Pine phone this is my huge SD card here. Let's see, I love the terminal and uh, and plasma. After coming from the Fosh terminal, it's just much better. So 
here's some things I've been building. So here, if you, I can actually, you know, run an app I've compiled. from the terminal that I was, you know, experimenting with um, experimenting with Kirigami. So really cool, you know, compare this experience of software development to Android where you've got to install all these weird Google tools and, you, you know, you got to push and, and, and all this stuff. You know, you, you build it on your desktop, push it to your phone, and it's just it's just a mess, right? So, on the Linux phone, you can develop your phone on the on your on your desktop, and then you can just get clone it to your phone, run make, make install, and you're done. I mean that that's the way it always should have been. That's the way it always should have been. So, You know, the phone book works fine. I haven't tried phone calls yet because Suspend is still not finished working yet. Like, they haven't finished developing the Suspend feature, at least if it's installed on the internal memory. So this is the Explore Edition. Still something, a lot of things don't work. But web browser works. Listening to music works. Saving web apps work. Compiling, developing. It's fast. It's enjoyable. It's got dark mode. You see, I get. I tried installing uh, some Electron apps. Uh, so, like Element, for example, is a good Electron app for Matrix Chat. The problem with that is, it uh, the size doesn't work on the phone. The keyboard doesn't sh doesn't pop up. It seems like if it's a non Kurigami app, the keyboard doesn't quite work. Neo Chat is absolutely a must have. Uh, so you can do all your chat in your Matrix Chat rooms through Neo Chat. And it works really well. It doesn't have encryption. So if you've got any room that you've enabled encryption in, you're not going to be able to use it from NeoChat. Just don't use encryption. So let me see if I can pause it. So this is the uh, PinePhone matrix chat. And sometimes it's not really responsive. Sometimes it is. But you see, it's, it's very easy to, it's very readable. It's very workable. And, and it's it's just enjoyable to use, right? You can chat on this just like you would any desktop client, and it works good. So you, while you don't have access to um, a lot of Android apps yet, this works fine. I did install uh, WayDroid, but right now there's no hardware acceleration in WayDroid, so nothing nothing is fast enough. I think we need to wait for an Android 11 image. It's currently on Android 10. And then uh, we can get hardware acceleration. It has something to do with a different version of Mesa and Android 10 is what some people were saying. But yeah, so for now anyway, the apps that it comes with work pretty decent. Yeah, we'll get Android apps, and once we get Android apps, there's really no reason, really no reason to want you know an Android phone because you have all this freedom. And really, so many Android apps are basically spyware. You want to run those in a container. You want that to be in a sandbox environment that doesn't affect the rest of your system. And to me, that's even better. Like if I want to install something like WeChat, which has direct ties with a you know the uh, a, a foreign government, well, I don't I don't want them having direct access to my system. But by putting it through a container, you kind of sandbox it off, just like you would with Docker containers. This is an absolutely great phone. I think it's uh, I think it's a great deal for four hundred dollars right now. It's only going to get better, and they're going to raise the price to 600 is what they're saying, probably once it works and it's daily driver ready. And they're going to say it's going to, they said it's going to take a year for it to be daily driver ready. Um, I'm okay with waiting for that for right now. It's a really fun phone. It also hooks up to a monitor. Fine. Um, it looks good. Uh, and, and it works as a desktop. Uh, KDE Plasma is not the best desktop environment. If you guys are interested, I can make a video about that. Um, but yeah, I just I just kind of want to show you around the Pine Phone. There's not a whole lot of videos out there yet with the Pine Phone Pro. Yeah, it's fast. It's a, it's very usable. You know, it's it's not quite as fast as like a One Plus Six, but it's 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 close. It's close enough, and it's very usable. Where there's the original Pine Phone, I can never recommend it. 
you know, for an actual phone. But this is it. I mean, this is really the convergent works good. Hooking it up to monitors works good. It's fast enough. It's got a big enough internal memory. You can hook up an SD card and expand that memory greatly. And that that's a huge amount of value. Like just to be able to expand the memory and and swap out a battery so easily. The, the phone is just naturally going to last a long time if you take care of it. So you see here I've got a screen protector. So it actually ships with a plastic screen protector on it just like the original Pine phone and it also ships with a glass screen protector. And I had bought one ready, and I was ready to apply it which is like the iPhone Pro 11 Pro Max is the one that fits but they actually put one in there so you get one shot you know if you mess it up you'll need to buy another one. Um, but I got it on the first go around. So yeah, totally doable. Something you want to buy a case, a cheap five dollar case from Walmart. Uh, if you want to buy this uh, little plastic thing, it doesn't do much, but at least it's something. Right now, it's a great tablet. It's a good web browser. It's a great MP3 player. Very usable for that. Suspend doesn't work, so when you're done using it, you want to shut it down. And right now, shutting down and restarting takes a long time. <sighs> Awesome phone though, super happy with it. Go out and buy it.